In the previous videos, we talked a lot about resistance and how we measure that based on Ohm's law or not just Ohm's law, but V equals IR. If you know the current flowing through a piece of conductor, for example, and you know the potential difference across the piece of conductor, you can find the resistance. But now we're going to look at a new equation where you can actually find resistance based on the dimension and the type of material of this conductor. So what we have here is a slice of, I guess, copper. Length, very long. If you are very long, your poor electrons have to go through a very long tunnel of atoms and so there's a lot of resistance there. If it's very short, it's a very small resistance. Okay, let's make it normal again. If you have a small cross-section area, that's the A. Oh, yo, 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 why so big? Cannot, cannot, cannot. Okay, if it's very small, you have a lot of charge carriers that need to squeeze through this very narrow tunnel and go all the way through this thing. So there's a lot of collisions happening and like, sorry, excuse me, we need to pass by. Okay, if you have a very large cross-section area, look at that, all that space for you to just cruise through and it's like very few collisions happening. And of course, when you have a large cross-section area, your resistance is very small, like literally small, small. The last thing that we haven't really encountered is this thing called resistivity. Observe what happens to the atoms in this copper when I change this value. Does it look familiar? We saw that in a previous video. So we kind of created this quantity called resistivity. If it's a high resistivity, lots of resistance, which means lots of atoms inside there for you to collide with and hinder your travel as you travel through this copper wire. Imagine you are the charge carrier. If the resistivity is very low, there's like barely any atoms. So we use this to quantify the material, copper, iron, aluminum, or otherwise. So the equation, or rather after everyone did experiments once upon a time, they did all kinds of changes, fat resistor, small resistor, long resistor, short resistor, different different materials resistor. They said, okay, I think we got this. Resistivity, we are going to define resistivity is, this one you should know, the definition, the resistance of a material, resistance of a material with a unit cross-section area, talking about all the variables that we looked at just now, area uh, what was the other thing? Uh? Area and our uh, length and unit length. In other words, the equation that we use is going to be rho equals to Ra over the length. So to help us see a bit what's happening, let's draw out that, that old tube. So we have a wire. Let's assume that it has a uniform diameter for now. Some past years, they will make it a funny shape. Okay, and you have some current flowing in, current coming out. This can be a wire, it can be a resistor, as long as it charges can flow through it. So you will have, firstly, the length, L. You have the cross-section area, A. And you have something that is related to the material itself, the resistivity rho. And because of that, overall, this piece of conductor will have some resistance R. Okay, that's how we can summarize that. So, the unit of this resistivity is, if you use some paper one skills, R times A over L. That will be the unit of ohm meter. That is the unit of resistivity. So if you look at the small tiny table down here, we've got some sample resistivities for us to look at. Okay, depending on different materials, you have different resistivity. If it's aluminum, you have 2.82 times 10 negative 8. That's bigger, you can see now. If you've got copper, it's different values. Look which one is the highest resistivity. Highest, highest, highest. Tungsten has the highest resistivity. Which one has the lowest? Look and see, look and see. 1.59, 1.7. Mm, this one has the lowest. So when you're making a wire or some kind of component, ideally you use something with low resistivity. 
but it's silver though it's gonna get stolen it's really expensive so we go to the next lowest which would then be copper which is a very common thing we use for wires in almost any wire the highest resistivity is tungsten and that is actually i think one of the metals used in filament lamps very high resistance so it will glow very red and bright mm. Now, what you will use more commonly, though, is not this form. What you will use com more commonly is to calculate the resistance based on the dimension. So we have R equals to rho L over A. And this one is the one you will want to remember. Resistance of a piece, which is in terms of its material, resistivity, its length, and its cross-section area. Do note that sometimes they won't give you cross-section area but you need to express in terms of radius or diameter. So cross-section area, if it's a circle, if it's a circle, lah, if it's other shape, you need to go and see what's the shape. So assuming this is a circular cross-section area, the radius will be pi r squared. If you want to do it in terms of diameter, which is more recommended, it will be pi d squared over 4. So remember these as you are doing your calculations. One last thing to add on is remember once upon a time when we looked at potential difference, we drew this graph on the left side. It's from an earlier video, okay? If you forgot already, go and rewatch. And if you're wondering, Miss, why uh, when we go across a resistor, the potential will drop like that linearly? Uh. Mm. When we draw graphs like this, we are, working, we are making an assumption, which is usually true for most resistors. So let's do the same, let's revisit that same kind of Vx graph here, where I would like to draw the potential against, I guess I'll call this distance x of, uh, of this resistor or whatever this is, a piece of wire. For assumption, I'm going to assume that only this is connected to the battery. So let's assume that the end point here is V0. V here refers to potential. Oh, you must clarify. So long have a look at potential. The potential, not potential difference. Potential. And on one side, let's assume we start off with a um, battery EMF, I guess. Or let's just pick a value, 12 volts. How about that? 12 volts. So from 12 volts, you drop to zero. That's why we have a potential difference. 12 to zero. Got difference, right? This one is potential difference. Okay, so how we draw the graph? We start off up here at 12. We know eventually we need to go down to zero, which is down there. How do we know it's a straight line? The first shortcut is to say, oh, let's look at the equation once again. The equation says that R equals to rho L over A. Now for this whole thing, if we assume that this is made of the same material, rho is constant throughout the entire journey. Cross-section area didn't change, so that is also constant throughout the entire journey. So from here, we can conclude that resistance is proportional to the length, no matter how short or how long it is. So from there, you can see it's a linear relationship between R and L. And later also, you can say, oh, V equals to IR. Okay, V is proportional to R because the current flowing throughout this entire thing is the same. And therefore, it's all linear. R proportional to L, V proportional to R. Therefore, it's a linear straight line graph. So we draw something like this. But in more complicated scenarios, this may not exactly help you get to your final conclusion. So here's a second method and perhaps the better one to think about how, would, how does resistance affect the potential drop per x? So let's chop this up. I'm going to say, let's chop this, uh, what, what do we call this thing again? Let's chop this resistor into tiny, tiny sections like this. One, two, three, four. And each of these lengths are fixed length intervals, also known as delta x, for each small interval of x. Okay, and we chop it up evenly. For each small section, there will be a potential drop, also known as PD. Uh, I think we'll just say delta V lah change in we don't want to use v because later we'll confuse everything okay so for each tiny section there is a drop in potential somehow all of them add up will drop from 12 to 0. okay now we look at the equation so based on the equation r equals to rho l over a let's write that out here r equals to rho l over a what's constant same material throughout okay we fix that and 
length okay the length we'll deal with that later this l refers to the whole thing cross section area the area is not changing so we keep this constant okay now we need to relate that to v so i'm going to do the next substitution and here we will say r equals to v over i so we sub that in equals to hmm, rho l over a okay so from here we say current throughout all this whole thing is constant crossing area is constant resistivity is constant so that leaves us with a relationship between potential difference and a length but we are going to look at just one little segment so for one segment the v here really means potential difference so we're going to say potential difference is proportional to the length of that little segment which is now called delta x because we're looking at one little segment remember we chopped it up okay so what this relationship tells us is that okay if the potential difference is proportional to tiny segment length then we can say that delta v over delta x is constant now that looks very familiar how is this helpful though delta v delta x and our graph delta v delta x is the gradient of the graph so this is the gradient of our vx graph ah of course it's a potential drop huh? so there's a negative here in your delta v so if your gradient is constant for each segment you uniform delta x then you have a straight line coming down that's a conclusion okay so in the past here you will see some funny shapes cone shape la, i don't know what shape you stay calm and you try to solve using this similar thought process okay but that's all for today's video i'll see you in the next one